What is going on everyone? Today we are diving into nodes a little bit and talking about how exactly this technology will change the way you play MMORPGs along with being the next big thing that those MMO devs try to copy. When you create a character in an MMO you pick the server that you start on and for the most part you stick with that one because that is where your time is and that is where you play with your friends and your guild is and all of that. But we have all been there where we've had that friend we wanted to play with on another server and you don't really want to grind through the leveling process again because it's the exact same and it's kind of boring well in today's mmos unfortunately unless you want to pay for a server transfer or a level boost that is basically what you need to do otherwise you are going to be forced to play through that drawn out leveling experience that you've already done once or twice and absolutely despise well with nodes in ashes of creation they will make each server unique so you may feel more inclined to jump into different servers to see where exactly your friend's world is at. As nodes rise and fall, so will your questing experience, as one server could have an entirely different set of quests and dungeons than another depending on the server's focus. While one server may have leveled up that dwarven economic node, another server may have chose to move slightly to the west and leveled up an elven military node, shifting the population of the server to go in different directions than one another, and in the long run, drastically changing up everything in the server from roads to quests and dungeons. Speaking of roads, one of the other big changes that nodes can take on are changing up the roads and bridges for trade roads. As nodes level, the roads and bridges will upgrade, and what was once a river that you had to tread through now has a bridge over it, which means faster ways of getting goods from nodes to nodes, which could even mean a stronger or weaker economy depending on the nodes you develop, because if you have the roads, you're more inclined to get the resources that are close to the roads, but if you don't have roads, who knows what you're going to do. In the start of the game, what I think is really going to drive the unique servers is the starting zones people choose to use. Intrepid is smart not locking these to each race and allowing people to start wherever they want because otherwise those players would come out of these same gateways corresponding to the race they choose and the first set of nodes would probably be really similar on each server because everybody's going to end up in the same starting spots. And obviously this would set out to make these servers a little too similar. But allowing players to choose where they start really can shift the population of the world making some spots heavier than they would have been so the way that players set out and explore and branch out across Vera will be different. In the massive world that Vera is you can expect 103 red regular nodes, which includes Underrealm nodes, and then 15 additional castle nodes. So there is basically 103 potential locations that you can have a booming metropolis, and with nodes locking each other out, chances of any server being identical is very low. Intrepid has even created a node simulation showing a node zone of influence over time, and as you can see as the colors shift, it drastically changes up these servers. And all of this can change even more with node sieges when players set out to destroy or de-level a node. So another other one can level up. In Alpha 1, we saw the case that all of these nodes had the same layouts as well, making them a bit boring, but Intrepid is working on making each node unique from one another with different layouts and different levels, so you can start seeing a lot more nodes like this, and less like this when we get into Alpha 2. Nodes will also, in a way, put an end to the race to world first boss kills. These achievements that were once game-wide as guilds compete to be the first to down a boss, all of a sudden are a little more limited to a server. Although, in a way, it takes out some of the fun for people, you are still able to do this in a server-specific manner, which might be a little more intense. Dungeons and raids are locked behind nodes, so as the nodes develop, the content gets unlocked, and with the majority of the raids in the world being open world, guilds could be sitting there waiting for the next raid to open, and when it finally does, rush to be the first to fight that boss, creating huge PvP events over a PvE objective. The days of repetitive questing and leveling are coming to an end with Ashes of Creation, because like all good things, if the technology is a huge success, then more will set out to copy it and try to improve upon it with their own iterations, forever changing the way MMORPGs are played out. Do you think that the node technology is game-changing technology for MMOs? Drop a comment down below, and if you're new to Ashes of Creation and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below, where all referrals will go towards benefiting this channel. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.